Hi food lovers, welcome back. Do you know what I feel like for lunch today? Freshly baked bagels with lashings of cream cheese and delicious toppings. I don't know what it is about these donut shaped bread rolls, but they're just simply delicious. Today we're going to make a batch of bagels and then assemble a professional looking bagel board and hopefully give you some inspiration to make your own. Have you ever made bagels before? I believe they originated in Poland and are essentially a basic bread dough that's shaped, boiled and then baked. This results in a light crust on the outside and a slightly chewy firm texture on the inside. Let's start by making the bagel dough. We need some flour, warm water, salt, yeast and maple syrup. The first step is to activate the yeast in lukewarm water. Adding maple syrup feeds the yeast which speeds up fermentation. This process releases carbon dioxide that essentially makes the bread rise. It's fascinating to watch this activation process and it only takes a few minutes. The release of carbon dioxide continues once the other ingredients are added, so let's do that now. Salt can kill the yeast, so we add that to the mixer bowl first, followed by the flour and then the frothy yeast mixture. Then mix it all together. Doesn't a dough hook make such light work of turning all of this into a perfect dough? If you don't have a mixer, just mix it and knead it by hand. It'll take a bit more effort, but just take your time. Now we need to let it rise. I like to wrap mine in the silicon mat and put it in a warm place to rise. It should roughly double in size. Here it is. It's been rising for an hour or so. Wow, look at all these strands. We need to work it into a ball but it will be sticky, so make sure you have some flour on hand. From here, we need to make our individual bagels. I find the easiest way to portion the dough is to divide it out. This recipe makes 12 bagels, so I'll halve it, then halve it again, and then divide each piece into three. To roll these balls into nice rounds, my thumb and pinky are rubbing the bench in a circular motion while my other fingers are cupping the dough and creating a perfect little ball. If you want these all exactly the same size, you can scale them off, but I love the rustic appearance of genuine home-baked goods. Now we've got our 12 balls, it's time to shape these into bagels. Pop your finger through the centre and work in a circular motion until you're completely through. Then I find by putting two fingers in, you can stretch the dough to form the centre hole. I love making bready type things. There's something so enjoyable about shaping dough and it's incredible how yeast works. Now here's the thing about bagels. You need to boil them. I've got a pot of water here with a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda in it. Adding an alkaline like bicarbonate of soda to the water gives the outside of the bagel a darker appearance once it's baked. The boiling gelatinizes the starch to set the outside of the bagel, and then the amount of time in the water will determine how much more it will rise once it's in the oven. There isn't an exact rule for how long you should boil them for. Just make sure you boil the whole batch for the same length of time, so that they all rise the same. I'm boiling mine for about 30 seconds on each side. Just give it a go. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Homemade. I always like to sprinkle them with sesame seeds or poppy seeds to give them a more professional look. You can do this between boiling the batches as the dough is still wet and the seeds will stick. Then they get baked in a preheated hot oven. They only need to bake about 20 minutes since they've had a head start with the boiling process. Yum! Don't they look delicious? So now comes the fun part of arranging our bagel board. I've had a bit of a think about what sort of platter I want to use. You want something large enough to fit everything snugly, but small enough that there aren't any large gaps. I've actually decided to use this white tray today. I think the colour will work out well with the colours of the other toppings I've got in mind. 
I always like to start with a central point and work outwards from there. I love pesto with bagels, so I'll start with a ramekin of chunky green basil pesto. I should have made it really, but for some reason I struggle to grow basil in the garden. It goes to seed very quickly and I don't get enough of a crop. Do you have any tips for growing it? I've also got a ramekin of date and apricot chutney. This is also delicious. There's a link in the description to a video about how to make this. In this ramekin, I'll add some jam. This gives us a wide variety of colours and flavours. Of course, the other thing you just have to have with bagels is a generous amount of cream cheese. So I'll put some of that over here. Now it's time to add the bagels. I'll add some in a few spots. I'm thinking about mixing up the topping varieties, overlapping them a little to create height and intrigue, and having them accessible from different sides of the platter. Platters are to be shared after all, so this makes it easier for a few people to serve themselves at the same time. Once we've got to this point, we can add in any other toppings we have. I've got some sliced ham, but you could use other cold meats or smoked salmon is a popular addition too. Don't just put it on the plate. Fold it or roll it or do something interesting with it. Cheese is great if you have some on hand. I've pre-cut mine so that it's right ready to use. And avocados are still in season here and I've got one so it will add some nice flavour. I'm fanning out these ingredients a little to add to the presentation of the overall board. Lastly, every platter needs a garnish or two to finish it off. So for that, I've got some cherry tomatoes. They add some colour and can be nibbled on in between bagels. I've also got some fresh rosemary which will add some green colour to our board. You could use any herb or even some curly lettuce leaves would look great. Doesn't this look so appealing and inviting? I can't wait to enjoy my lunch. Don't worry, I'm not going to eat it all myself. I will share it. Making platters is such a fun way to enjoy shared food. It creates conversation and great memories. If you enjoy making food look great, make sure you check out my video on food presentation myths. There are a couple of easy things you can do to take your food presentation to the next level. See you over there. Happy bageling.